but you know, I don't want to necessarily um, spend spend my time like trying to fix my bad drawing or something like that. So if I can maybe get a good drawing down, it'll allow me the freedom. You're about to meet a crazy man. I mean, it's certifiably <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Eric, uh, how's it going? Good. Tony Serenai is with us today. Tony is the host of the Suggested Donation or co-host of the Suggested Donation podcast. Which I'm the main got, host. You're the what? Main host? I'm, I'm the main host. Forget about the other guy. Yeah, okay. Wh whatever his name is. Whatever. Yeah. Edward something. At, at, <laughs> Teddy. 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 <laughs> Anyway, uh, welcome to uh, whatever we call this. We don't have a name yeah. for it. But, you don't uh, have a name. It's like Face Live, you know, chat, Facebook something. Well, it's a it's a Facebook Live, I guess. But there uh, you go. Well, you're getting also, some amazing. You're getting some amazing people on this. Yeah, thank you. We uh, yeah. we're getting a lot of views too. I was, you know, some some of the people in in the replays. I was looking last night. I think. Uh, one of them was up to 16, 20,000 views. Was wow. Cool. Yeah. Well, this one's going to be a disaster. So I hope well, you have some I, good I, ones. You know, I'm, I'm thinking if we get 10 people, we're going to be lucky. I'm just. Yeah. yeah. I'll take yeah. whatever I can get. That's right. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the same way. I'll take it. Well, uh, Tony, we're, uh, what are you going to do today for us? <sighs> what am I going to do? So, uh, you know, I know it's such a short amount of time. Uh, um, to do this. And what we do is traditionally such a long extended moment when you're in, in, in the pocket of doing a painting. But I, you know, when I, when I teach, um, there's certain things that I think are really important that I think are passed over a lot by a lot of people, or they're not being told this and whether it's workshops or some of their other schooling. And today I wanted to do a really quick, very basic value study of something done from life. Cause I work from life. Okay. Right. So I, 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 I love in some of my, my more complicated still lives or even figure paintings, I love doing little value studies that can only, you know, you can spend anywhere from half an hour to an hour to a few hours on them, depending on uh, complexity. But I think they're incredibly valuable when it comes to understanding what you're doing in front of you because painting is hard enough. Value is probably the most important thing outside of drawing when it comes to uh, a good drawing, when it comes to a successful painting. Why don't I show painter. people a couple of your paintings just so that they actually know you're qualified to talk about this. Yeah, stuff. well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, you're, you're, you're world famous for your still lifes. Yeah. Uh, that's absolutely incredible. I like this one a lot. That's reminds me of my 1950s childhood or 1960s yeah, childhood. Yeah, exactly what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't really tell what that is because it's so small on the screen, but it looks like a a bug on some plants. Yeah, it's a bee on yeah. You know, a uh, little tiny self uh, self portrait from back in the day from a while. That's back. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Those are little studies. Those are like little studies I would do for bigger paintings. Ah, okay. That was a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you do incredible work. And, and Thank you. Uh, so we're going to have you back in just a minute. I'll make a, a couple of announcements, and then you can set up your camera in the meantime, and, and I'll be right back. You know, value is this incredible, incredibly important thing when it comes to painting. And when people say, well, what is value? Value is the difference um, uh, between – uh, black and white. So the idea that you have black and white and uh, um, all the, the you know, let's, some people call them shades, uh, grays, in between is really what makes a painting uh, very successful outside of drawing. Now, you can play with the hue, and when I say hue, I mean, is it red, is it yellow, is it green? And the chroma, which is how saturated that red or yellow or green are. But if you were to take the, the hue and the chroma out, you're left with value. So something like this would represent value. And if you look at this, these are all pre-mixed. Um, I do things like this. Um, I have my students and you know make value scales like this. Can you see that pretty well? So I have them mix these because I think it's so incredibly important to understand that all painting is between this and this. 
So you have white, pure white, and absolute black here. This is black. That's This is ivory black that's been dried and varnished over. So that's about as black as we can get in paint. This is white. That's uh, titanium white out of the two. Those are the two highest, uh, two extremes that we have in 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 our paint. So I pre-mixed my paint in accordance to this. So I know that this can represent what I have here. So when I'm doing a, a still life or a, a portrait, I'm always trying to figure out the color that's in front of me. How dark and how light is that color next to the value? How dark and how light the net the the other uh, 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 the next uh, uh, adjacent or, or color is. So, so a lot of times when I'm doing paintings in the very beginning, and the reason why I'm doing these cubes is I think they're so easy and you can do these very quickly to practice your value. Now it's, it's when you're doing color studies, uh, you're so enamored by the color that you're always trying to nail that color. But really, I think it's good to even set up a very colorful still life and try to find out what the value is. Because you'd be very surprised sometimes how, and I'm going to start going as I'm, and I'll describe what I'm doing because I know I don't have a lot of time. So what I'm always doing is I'm doing this, and I don't know if you guys can see this, and I'm going to try to, like, I'm comparing, you could do this with this, you could do it with your, your, your knife, with the paint on your, on your palette, you know, and I'm always constantly sort of saying, like, for example, if you see, I'm going to try to, if you're seeing, like, let's say this value right there, I can use this to try to find, and, it, and it's not an exact science, but I try to find, if I squint, 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 oh, I can kind of see, and I know that's about, you know, a value four-ish. When I say four, I mean, this would represent my um, black, I'll call this number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, white. So that, and I just put a number on it because it's easier, it's 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 via Munsell. Hey, it's easy, yes. See, if you had these uh, very stylish uh, value specs, ah. it, 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 it just, all you have to do is look at your, your object and it tells you exactly what your value is. Now, let me ask you this. When you put those on, because I'm such a uh, tech nerd, does it change the value at all as far as like what it is? I, it's good. I, you can compare them very well, I'm assuming. with this. It does not does, change the value. Does we it drop the value at all? We went through about 30 iterations to get it right. It does not change the value. It turns everything red. Uh, red. Yeah. But uh, that's okay because what we're really trying to do is to understand the value. Anyway, that was my yeah. shameless uh, self-promotional plug. All that's great, and besides, you, I mean, just the cool factor on that. I mean, that th that that alone is worth getting them. Oh, so yeah. if I'm looking at that background, let's say back here, sometimes I try to find things like the backgrounds, things that are a little bit simpler to get, so I can get into the things that are a little bit more complicated, especially if this becomes a complicated still life. So I'm going to again, sort of do this with my eye. And you know, I with for people who are really uh, doing this at home, or when they're in the private studio, you know, make one of these try to get the Munzel uh, or some sort of standard, and I'm just using the Munzel standard right now. Uh, and try to pre mix your grays. These I are think you should assume that nobody knows what a Munzel standard is. Can you just quickly say what Munzel is? So Munsell is a is a is a is a color system that was uh, designed by uh, um, Albert Munsell in the 19th century, and it really is just a uh, systematic way to um, categorize color. And part of that is value. So it's hue, value, chroma. Uh, um, so it's you know there's a lot you could you can get. I know Graydon Parish is is you know I do it a lot. Graydon does it a lot. There's a lot of information out there. Um, you know, we have an amazing amount of ability to find information. Uh, so go out there and try to, um, you know, research as much as you can. Or, you know, one day if I, you know, when we're all together, please, by all means, come in and, and say hello to me and we'll talk. But anyway, so what I'm going to try to do is what I sometimes do with my own still lives and or any paintings. I'm trying to find a standard to orientate myself to what my value structure is gonna be. And a lot of times I do maybe even put in a background. And the great thing about categorizing this, it's, and I almost look at it like a, like a Sudoku puzzle, let's say, where I'm like, well, you know, and I know it sounds weird to start talking art 
when it comes to numbers. I know that sounds very weird, but it's it's I'm just using it as a, a almost as a language. And if I can almost look at it mathematically, it can give me a basis of where to start from. And painting's hard enough. So anything that can kind of help me orientate myself, I'm, I'll take it. Um, so I kind of deduced, you know, the background to be, in this case, I'll, I'll put this up, I'll try to paint like this, about a value two and a half, which is about these two. So what it's going to do is it's going to, I'm just going to basically put it in as a, as a, as a, as a almost as a, a, a foothold. So I can move forward because I know all these other things are so, there's so many different important relationships going on. And if you are able to, to, to get yourself a standard that you can, uh, to, to, that you feel is, is a very good educated guess, uh, you can use that to sort of springboard into finding out all these other values. Now, when you're doing this in, in let's say that's a colored uh, still life or figure, it can get very difficult to find out what this bright red, what value is that bright red? Because a lot of times it's very, very high chroma red might actually be a lot lower in value than it looks. You're just enamored by how how bright the color is on that red, uh, how, how chromatic it is. And you might not realize that it might be a value four, which is something like that, you know, and that just seems way too dark. But so it, it gets tricky. Uh, and that's why I think these are such great exercises is um, because you're really forcing your eye to look at how light and how dark is the color I'm looking at. And how does that relate to the color next to it? If I'm mixing a perfect color, let's say on my palette, and I mix mostly on my palette and then I close, the perfect color will no longer be perfect if the color near it is wrong or is not related in the same respect as uh, you know, the way I see it uh, from my, my setup. Or, Somebody asked us, where, where did you get your cubes? Did you just cut out little blocks of wood and paint them? No, colors? no. I just found them on the internet, raw wooden cubes, and I paint them all. When I do my color workshop or my still life workshops, you know, I'll bring them with me. But I just found some wooden cubes and I painted them. I have all crazy colored cubes, like really intense colors and a lot of super gray ones and everything in between. And I think they're really great. But you yeah, can do this like with your this. Your palette might be glass or plexiglass? No, it's just um, it's just a, um, a regular wooden palette that I put neutral five, which is about this color uh, on it because I like to mix on something that doesn't change the color. Uh, so if I have a red or a yellow here, and and this happens to be uh, a color that would be um, a complementary or something, it might change the look of it to my eye. So I like to paint. I like to paint on a neutral um, uh, surface because I, it really I can really see the color for what it is. I'm not mixing it. Uh, uh, I'm not mixing it um, through the air into my eyes to say, well, this red and this let's say yellow background or yellow red background is is making it look a little different so i like i i mean that's just personal for me i like it um so anyway i'm just going to try to really quickly and i know this we have such little time to orientate a background color and i know looking at all this and again i might and you can't see it from my view but i might do something like this and if from where i'm looking let me see if i can do this with uh, it really looks, let me try to do this. Hold on. If you can really see, I'm looking at this, this part of the cube. And I drew, did a quick drawing of there because I'm sure people didn't want to get bored of watching me do a, a drawing. So it really looks like if you see, do you see how this color right here that I'm tapping on seems to, if I squint, it just seems to disappear behind the actual cube. Now you can do that with your palette knife. And it works very well. Um, so I'm going to say, basically, it's going to be something about that. And if I can get in the neighborhood, at the address that I want to be, as close as possible as the address, like the idea that, you know, I'm in, I'm in New York right now. So if you're like, hey, I'm, 
I'm on Park Avenue, somewhere on Park Avenue between 57th Street and 96th Street. Well, that's a pretty big area. But if I could say, hey, I'm on Park Avenue, somewhere between 72nd and 73rd Street, I might not have the exact address, but I'm pretty close. I'll be able to find my, uh, my destination pretty easy. So I kind of think of that when I'm, when I'm painting, especially in the beginning, because it's like I just want to find the destination to be as accurate as I can, even when I place it. So if there's a, a ability to place it really, really accurately, it makes I spend more time adjusting tiny things as opposed to having to fix everything uh, and spend all my time fixing things. I'd rather sit there and do nuanced stuff for uh, as long as I can, as opposed to really trying to uh, fix and things that are wrong. So I try to block in, even on my underpaintings, I try to block in as close as I can, giving myself some sort of leniency to know that I'm going to do some adjustment later on. But the closer you are, you know, you get a nice little, uh, and especially in the beginning, it's a little tricky because, um, you know, until you have a lot of information down, everything looks wrong, especially if you're trusting sort of the mathematics in your head of like, well, this, for example, that background, it couldn't, you know, if I, when I was using my little strip, when I went to a value, one, it was too dark. When I went to a value three, it was too light. A value two was a tiny bit too dark. So I was like, well, that means it's a value two plus a tiny bit of three. Now I know I'm using the, the, the number thing again, and that seems weird to people, but you could just do that. Let's just say, well, I knew that this color was a little too dark and this color was a little too light. I knew it was a mixture between the two. And then, um, and then it's leaning a little bit closer to the lighter than let's say the dark. So that's something you could do without, let's say if you're just uncomfortable <laughs> thinking about uh, um, numbers when it comes to um, art. Um, so, you know, for example, and I know it's hard to see from my view because I work from life. So my view is a tiny bit different than yours right now with the camera. If I'm looking at this side that I'm painting on right now, from where I am, this, part of the cube is a tiny bit darker than this. So if I block this in, knowing that I established that so far, and if I do that and I put a little mark here, I could see it's a tiny, I don't know if you could see it, but it's a tiny bit darker than what I have there. So I know at least I'm in that realm. And when I, when I said the Sudoku puzzle, anybody who knows about those, like if I know that in a box, let's just say, um, in a box in the Sudoku puzzle, if this number is this and this number is that and that number is that, well, then this has to be this. And in a way, I sort of do that myself where I'm like, well, this has to be this value because that's the only way that it would work because it, it's a little bit darker than this. It's a little bit lighter than this. I'll compare it to something else that I'm confident on in the painting and then I would say, well, this has to be the solution. So it's logic. Um, and I will do that with color too. Well, it's not as bright as this and it's not quite as gray as that. And I'll compare it to things that I have a little bit more confidence in. And you do that a bunch of times all over the painting and all of a sudden the painting starts to come together. It starts to be unified value-wise or color-wise or even hue, you know? Uh, you can play with hue and chroma a lot for your own artistic um, ideas, and I, and I like that. Um, and you can with value, too, but less because it will fall apart more if your values are really off as opposed to if you're – you can take color and adjust it all day long, and it will still look cool as long as the values are right. And, and so and – the, um, and the chroma as well. You know, you can play with the chroma – not quite as much. I mean, if, the, if you blast out the chroma on something um, compared to something that is very low chroma, it, you know, the low chroma, the beauty of a low chroma color will end up, you'll hear this from some art teachers, it'll look uh, chalky or it'll look uh, muddy. Uh, that just means your, your chroma is off. There's no such thing as muddy colors or chalky colors. All colors are beautiful. Um, so it just depends on your relationship 
with uh, uh, the other colors around you that would give the appearance of something that one would say is chalky or muddy. Next time you have an art teacher who says that to you, tell them to explain that because I think that's uh, it's too much of a, uh, um, it's like lazy to just say that. Explain why that you're getting the idea of what chalky is. And explain why it means it's muddy. So if I'm looking at this, this right here compared to here, I know it's not white. It can't be that. That's my extreme. And I know if I took something, I have things that are brighter than that, that I could put on an angle towards the light because this is uh, the plane of this is, is vertical. So it can't get that. Um, it can't, if I were to bend it 45 degrees, it would be lighter. So I know just through logic of, 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 um, of what uh, of optics that this can't be white, so I can't use white. Um, so I'm I'm dropping it down a tiny bit, knowing that I have to reserve some black and some white um, as my extremes. So as I put that in, and again, I squint a lot when I paint, um, even with you know in you know. Kind of known for doing some some a lot of detail. Question: Why don't you paint on a middle gray canvas like uh, like your palette? I do sometimes, um, and I and I like that. Um, but it depends. Uh, this I just happen to have, and it's fine. You know, I I, I can paint on white canvases, uh, uh, block it in this or or gray but a lot of times with my painting paintings you know ones i would show in galleries i tend lately to do a lot more emotions which is a colored underpainting so i tend to work on a white canvas in the beginning and start um blocking in the basic color of it uh but if you know i do start on on um a kind of gray probably about a value six it ends up being somewhere around here a lot of times and i like it it's great but you know uh, again what I'm saying aren't rules. It's, I think these are really good things to do at an early stage of, of, of people's education. As soon as you learn things like this and they become second nature, you start not relying on things like this and you don't rely on things because it becomes part of your language that you start to understand. Does it mean I don't go to it sometimes? No, I. I have all these tools in my my toolbox to go to when I am a little like, hmm, I don't exactly know what to do on this one. Here, let me use some of the things that I've I've uh, um, established in my past as foundations for my ability to paint. And you know, you hear things like, let's say, color or value that you know I've mentioned myself. And people are like, well, isn't that that paint by numbers thing? No, it's not. It's just a systematic way of understanding color learn it and then don't and then have it in your back, your back pocket or have it in your head uh, every great painter understands the principles of what I'm talking about um, doesn't mean they're using this exact system but it's like saying it's like going up to a, a, a figure like uh, a, a person who's uh, uh, drawing the uh, a figure and you're like well you don't need to know anatomy well why you know it's just it hinders your artistic expression. Somebody wants to know when you hold up your value scale against your object, you got to make mm -hmm. sure it's in the same light. Is that correct? Yes. Good question. If you are setting up, because I am somebody who works from life, if you are setting up in your studio, in, make sure that your canvas is in either the same light source as your setup, or you have, let's say, a very similar light. Let's say you're very far back, because I've done paintings that are very big and you can't be close and could, I couldn't be in the same light source because at this particular moment I was using artificial light. Make sure that you have a light source that's um, very similar to the one that's lighting your setup. Um, because if you light a setup um, different than your, than your subject matter and you take it into um, a different room, it's not going to look like the painting is on so it's very important. It's a good question. Um, I've done a lot of research on light um, 
invite sources and everything for my own studio. I made a but, discovery. Maybe you can comment on this. I had sure. uh, I had my light too bright on my canvases. Mm -hmm. What was and then I'd take my paintings out and they'd be very dark. Dark. Yes. So yeah, that's an important that's an important um, you know epiphany or whatever. Yeah, you want to have. And also if it's so bright on your canvas, also, you know, I always try in my workshops and with my students, also talk about like real life stuff, as far as like uh, real life practices. Your eyes are gonna get fatigued if your light source is so bright on your canvas too, and that back and forth between your canvas and your setup, your eyes gonna have to constantly be adjusting back and forth between light and then having to see something that's a tiny bit darker. So try to like balance what's on your painting and or palette and what's on your the, the light sources i mean the the subject matter itself and you know one of these days when we have more time i'd love to go into things like the color of light the 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 the, the, uh, the color rendering index the cri of the bulbs if you're going to use artificial light i i i have a artificial light set up in my studio here in new york but i also have skylight and you know, different paintings, I do different light sources for them because of you know whatever the spirit of what I'm trying to go for in the painting. Um, it's great to to know how to control both. You know, we're we're very fortunate these days. Oh, why did my camera just do that? Hmm. Is that really it? Um, I don't know why my camera just switched. Switched? Did it switch to you on on over there? Can you still hear me? Uh -oh. Hey, Eric, can you still hear me? Can you not hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, all of a sudden it got yeah, very back. wide. I don't know what happened. It's like yeah, it went into camera. wide, Let me went see into wide adjust, mode. Let me see if I can adjust my camera. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm with the whole like doing things from, uh, from, oh, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. Excellent. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm starting to try to understand technology too. <laughs> It's so difficult because uh, you know I'm not where I'm just not used to it. So I think a lot of us have been going through um, this new world, you know, hopefully as temporary as possible of like talking via the internet. And I can't wait to be back in person to person with all of you. Um, and I think we all are so so uh, looking forward to that. So you know, the idea of um, just doing technology right now, you know, it's great that we can, but I'm still learning it just like everybody else. Uh, anyway, so I forgot what I was saying to you before. I'm sure it wasn't very important. <laughs> so, so what I'm doing right now is I'm bouncing for this value study. And I think these are so important to do, like I mentioned, uh, from value to value to now I'm starting. I'm starting to get enough information down that's not completely 100%, but it's orientating myself to like what the picture is going to start, how it's going to start holding together. And um, you can still see me, right? I don't know why it's doing that. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention, and I do these for uh, color studies too, and that's something I think I'll be doing at the the actual event uh, in October is doing a full color study something like this these are some of the color studies if you could see that can you see that eric i do these little color studies that become really really important to me for how to figure out how yeah. to go about the rest of my painting that looks these like a finished painting to me but you'll be surprised same with this this is a value study same idea of what i'm doing right now these are incredibly important when i when it comes to doing you know, the rest of the painting. Do you studio. typically do a value study like that before you do a, a Well, I'll tell you painting? another color study. These are, I do these really quickly. You could do these in an hour, two hours, three hours, not, a, you know, and, and the wealth of information that you'll get from them are incredibly valuable, especially when you're about to possibly spend a month, a week, a, two days to a month or several months, whatever on a painting. Get all the information you can from it. So when you're in the middle of the painting, you're not like, oh, 
I can't believe I just like, I just did this like huge mistake or something like that. So, you, and the way I do it is when I am in the middle, like let's say I mentioned before the underpainting, remember? Um, as the underpainting is drying, well, I'm not gonna waste my time and not paint because I'm waiting for something to dry. I want this to be dry before I go into my first layer. So what I'll do is I'll do a value study. I'll do a color study. Um, I'll figure out other information that's gonna be incredibly valuable and hopefully make my, my time and my experience, my moment with this painting so much better. Uh, again, like I mentioned, I don't wanna spend time fixing mistakes. I wanna spend my time being an artist and making artistic expressions and changing things on the purpose of art and not because it looks like crap or something like that. So it's, you know, these are things that I try to do and it's, it, and it's hard, painting's hard and it's amazingly rewarding and beautiful. And, you know, I highly recommend it <laughs> to anybody. <laughs> um, so I love the idea of having information so I could sit and, um, and, and just kind of get lost in the painting um, because I have little moments of foundation moments like a value study or, or understanding what my value is going to be or understanding what my color is. Hopefully I have a good drawing down so I don't have to necessarily work on my, my drawing all, all that much. You know, you're always drawing. I'm constantly drawing as I paint. But, you know, I don't want to necessarily um, spend spend my time like trying to fix my bad drawing or something like that. So if I can maybe get a good drawing down, it'll allow me the freedom to, to try to tackle the value or the value will allow me the freedom to try to tackle my, my hue or my chroma, you know, outside of the, the you know, the, the conceptualization of what my painting is going to be. Um, so it becomes incredibly important to do these little things. And, and the reason also why it's so suggestive is that you can do them fast. Now, maybe not in the beginning, but eventually they're really fast and you don't and you don't have to get nervous about it because it's just it's just some paint, some canvas, and it, you don't have to dedicate a huge amount of time to these. Um, and you can get, you know, and you do a bunch of them, and you know, these little these little things become like like they look like finished paintings, but if I were to go really close to, you know, look, I might have spent a little bit more time on this one than some of the other looser ones. Here's another one I, I wanted to pull, and these are things I think I'll do at face. Is like this was a this was a color study that I was working on on a big painting. I figured out so much information doing these for a day or two days or something like that on a big big painting because I knew I was going to about to embark on a on a month or two long a month and a half long you know endeavor to paint this painting. So I might as well take a, a couple of days or a day to to figure out some of the logistics, let's say, <laughs> on how I'm gonna uh, you know, attack this thing. So, um, so I highly recommend doing these type of things. And they're just so easy to, to set up. You, can, you don't need a fancy studio. You don't need to hire like an expensive model or anything like that. You can just um, do these and, 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 and don't worry too much about them. Just, just do them, do 20 of them. By the 20th one, you're gonna be so much better as a painter just by doing these constantly value studies color studies but you know value 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 you know I, we joke about value being like 80 percent of a good painting and we joke but it's like i'm joking not joking it's 80 percent you know it's well, like how he does all the work really and important. color gets all the credit right Absolutely good. Yes. Can I steal that? When when you do a color study, if if you do your study and you just don't feel like things are working, then you'll change things around. You're looking will, for color harmonies. What what's absolutely. the purpose? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes when I'm setting up my still life, I don't see certain things. That's what a drawing comes into as far as like, you know, the the linear composition of stuff. I might not see like, ah, oh, I don't like how these two like forms are hitting each other Ugh, let me change that around and you've only got about three, three minutes left oh, you. Sorry. all right sorry i'm trying to go as fast as i can I'm, I'm a slow painter so and take your time on these you don't have to go fast and wacky like i am but anyway so like you can start seeing that as i'm doing this it's start i mean it was, there was nothing there the more i do these the more you start to see that yeah i'm starting to get a foundation of at least where to jump off and, you know, if I wasn't sitting here 
yapping the whole time and just sort of concentrating, it would go a little faster. Oh, that's but okay. the, yeah, and you're but using the, a small I, brush too. What was that? I said you're using a small brush too. Uh, I mean, it's not a big paint. You know, the idea is if you're going to do these bigger, just use a bigger brush. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the idea that this is a very, very basic. Let me see if I can move this camera from where I am. You know, I wanted to also show you that red cube. That was something I had to really squint really hard to see. What is that red? How how dark or how light is that red? Let me put this camera yeah. back here. Well, reds always throw us off, I think. Absolutely. So one of the ideas is that when I look at the red, and it, let me take my, uh, my uh, I started realizing that this part of the red right here was very, very similar to this. So yeah. I took with my eye, I was doing this, like, let's say if you could take your knife, flatten it out. I have a, I have a about the same value here. And I started seeing with my eye that if I compared this to this, I saw that they were incredibly similar. That helped me orientate what exactly was the value of that red because it's so instinctual to want to paint it red, you know, and, and of course in a more complicated, longer conversation, well, exactly what red is that? There's a huge amount of variety of red. Uh, and it's this goes cool. for all yeah, colors. I think it's great advice. Uh, Tony, uh, we've got a lot of questions we won't have time to get Please. to. Maybe you can go back in tonight and uh, sure. answer some questions. Tony, this has been fabulous. Why don't you come back on camera so we can see your face? All right, let me switch it all around if you give me a second. So our guest today has been Tony Sir and I. And um, I don't know where he went. Uh, I'm just switching over to it. I'm using two cameras. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm fancy. Oh, you are fancy. Okay. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to just sort of show, show you, because I know everybody likes to see paintings. This is something I just got framed up, but I wanted you to know that I did the same thing on this. Back to what we were saying is I wanted a very high uh, key, high, very high key painting. And can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to get a very high. So it took me a lot of value studies to understand how to do something like this in an incredibly high key, knowing that I wanted to do that. So I could spend most of the time working on like a really small amount of detail. So things like you know, you'd be surprised how invaluable things like a value study would come in to understand. So you can so you can have that luxury of spending time either playing artistically detail whatever it is playing with color so uh value values value is a, a good thing to put, get in your right. in your tools of oh. expertise what are you going to do on realism live do you have an idea so after this conversation i, I didn't but i think maybe what would be really great is maybe do like i was showing you those those little color studies uh maybe doing a really nice color like a small quick color study to show you the oh, same idea, idea what i was doing but with color a oh, great idea all right mm -hmm. Well, Tony, thank you Can't for really being on today. I really appreciate it. This was very generous of you. It was great. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, thank you for doing this, especially during this time. I think it's incredibly important that we're in any way possible trying to get together um, because it's more it's more important than ever that we're actually communicating together Terrific. because we can't see each other.